Hi everyone, I'd like to welcome you to this week's Therapy Tip Tuesday. My name is Miss Sam, and you can find me in the Wantaw or East Yapank office. This week, I'm going to be talking about the SOS feeding hierarchy, or the sequential oral sensory approach to feeding. So a little bit of history to get us started. This hierarchy was created by Dr. K. Toomey in order to assess and treat children with feeding difficulties or weight growth difficulties. This is a 32-step hierarchy to eating, and the broad categories include tolerate, interact with, smell, touch, taste, and eat. And under each broad category are specific categories to interacting with food. So under tolerate, it might be looking at the food when it's directly in their space, or it being on the table right in front of the child. Some examples of interact with may include using a utensil to cut up the food. Um, next step would be smell, so leaning down and smelling the food or maybe smelling the odor of the food in the room. Next would be touch, so whether it's using their finger um, or their lips or their teeth to touch the new food. Then it would be taste. So licking, uh, maybe even biting off a piece and spitting it out, or even biting off a piece, chewing it a few times and spitting it out would all fall under the broad category of taste. And then we get to the top, which is eating. So biting, chewing, and swallowing the new food. So just a few facts for you guys. Food is considered new unless it is tried 10 times. So we always recommend to our patients trying a food at least 10 times and staying consistent with that food. Rejecting food is going to be normal. Although it may be frustrating, remember, it's normal. And exposure is going to be so important. So making sure that your child is exposed to this food not only in the therapy room, but at home and we're staying consistent. Some treatment strategies that we can use when working through our hierarchy is social modeling, structured meal and snack times, and reinforcement. There's two different types of reinforcement, positive and negative. Positive reinforcement is to learn a new skill. The process of rewarding or reinforcing you know, that desirable behavior in order to increase the likelihood that that behavior is going to happen again in the future. Negative reinforcement's purpose is volume. So the encouragement of certain behaviors by removing or avoiding a negative outcome. And the purpose of these or the goals for these treatment strategies is to increase those preferred foods and the exposure to non-preferred foods and learning a mealtime routine. We try to keep the routine as consistent as possible between the therapy room and home. So whether that's setting up our meal, or maybe we start with washing our hands, then we set up our meal or set the table, get our food, eat, clean up. We try to keep our routine as similar as possible from the therapy room to home. Some of the ways that I target diet rep during my sessions is using pink cat games. This helps with motivation and it's also fun for the kids. They get to feed different animals or maybe a robot or a truck, um, whatever's motivational to them. So they can just drag the food, feed the animal while they eat, so do they. So they try their new food while feeding um, on the game as well to help with that motivation. So just remember, keep up the exposure at home. Exposure is going to be super important. So we love when you guys are trying the new foods at home as well as in the therapy room and keeping it positive. Food should always be a positive experience. So always clapping or praising when your child is trying new foods, whether it's tolerating it on the table or interacting with it, or even all the way up to eating. Always making it a positive experience and praising them for trying. I just wanna say happy Better Hear, Hearing and Speech Month. I will see everyone next week for another Therapy Tip Tuesday. Thank you.